I'm super excited to have her. You know how I start everything. I am here with See, you hear the, you hear the feedback, right? So let me shut this down. Okay, here we go. So I just make sure everything was working. <laughs> so welcome, Valerie. I'm so excited you're with me tonight. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> so listen, for those of you who don't know me, I am your host of the Sunday Corner. This is year six. Yes. I can't stand it. It's year six. And this is a conversation I've probably been waiting for for like three years. <laughs> so this is one of these super, this is a really important conversation. I'm so excited to be talking with you tonight, Valerie. Um, Valerie and I go back a hot minute. We met what, four years ago? Like over four years ago. Four, yeah. 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 I mean, so, wow. <laughs> so it's been a minute. We met at a yeah. retreat. Let me tell you something. If you want to be big in your business or your life, you got to go to retreats. Like you got to invest. Mm -hmm. You got to put in the time and the energy and the effort and you get to meet the most amazing people. It's not just about what you get to take away, but it's about who you get to network with. And so I got to network with Valerie a few years ago, and we've both been working together for a long time. So I'm very excited. So let's just get started. Listen, this is going to be, it's going to be, we're going to pack as much as we can into 30 minutes. You know, Valerie, how we do me and Valerie get on zoom and it's two hours. It's Ooh, like easy. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> easy. <laughs> so Valerie, listen, since you call yourself the book coach accelerator, I thought we would start, especially for those of you who are like, you think you have a book in you, but you don't know if you can do it by yourself. I'm going to be asking Valerie some questions. She doesn't really know what I'm going to ask her because I'm not really hundred percent sure. Y'all know I like to be on the fly, but you know, tell them, tell everybody what it is to be a book coach. Tell them what a book coach accelerator is so that they can understand, is it something that they could use in their own personal life or if they were writing a book? Absolutely. Well, I call myself the book coach accelerator because the main thing I think I do, or I know that I do is I listen to your life. There are so many people who have a story to tell and they don't know, like people have said, oh my God, you should write a book. Or they see you excelling in a certain area, like you need to put that in a book or a million other reasons. But part of it is how will someone else get to know about that circumstance, that situation, you know, that accomplishment even, unless you put it out there somewhere. And for many people, that book is, it has now replaced the calling card, the business card, because sure for all of you who have thousands of business cards at your house, you don't remember who it was, where you <laughs> was, or any of that. So throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> At least those, those ones that's in that container. Okay? I got a stack right you know? here. Oh, that's and, bad. But with a book, you can carry it with you. You can go back. You'll remember where you were. And you'll and that person, it's, it's like taking a piece of that person home with you. Yeah. And a book is a legacy piece even. Yes. So it's something that you have forever. Yeah. So I know you always talk about legacy. Um, so let's just talk about your legacy a little bit. Let's, as opposed to asking about, you know, your childhood and being really corny, I'm going to just, I'm going to drop you a couple of, couple of words and we're just going to do some word association right here. When I tell you guys, we are not scripted. She does not know look, what's on these index cards. There's nothing on this index card. Um, I trust her. <laughs> She was trying to pray before this. She was like, oh, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. It's all going to be great. All right. So I want to start with you, like who you are. So we know that this is like your tagline. This is your business. You're a book coach, but you're so many other things. And so I wrote down four words that I think really epitomize who you are, like really kind of just, um, there's a word using sign language like this, that kind of takes all the things you are and puts it into just like a, a small package. And I would like you to pick one. I'm going to give you four and you can pick the one that you think you'd like to talk about that you think you'd like to share that what either makes you a great writer or makes you a great coach or both. So here are the four words. I know that you're a poet. I know that you're a dancer slash choreographer. I know that you're a mom and I know that you're a high creative. Pick one and tell us about it. Ooh. All right. All very good. I'm, I'm going to jump there with dancer. Yes. I'm going with dancer. <laughs> And I would go with that because I like to move. I was out just the other day. I told someone, I'm sorry, if I hear music, I'm gonna start dancing. And we were in the street 
and it was good music going and I just started dancing and they were like, you weren't kidding. <laughs> like, I'm going for it, man. I used to dance in Pier One because they always played the good music in there. Yes. Okay. See somebody that remembers, but um, I have always been dancing since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I hated leaving New York because all the dancing was happening. That's where it was. So ended up in Jersey and um, danced at the Nave. And I always remember boogie nights Oh. at the <laughs> wearing multicolored wigs doing the dance boogie nights sitting with a chair and white gloves oh my god that was my pre-Broadway move <laughs> yes and then, oh my god I got to college and I co-founded Black Movement's Dance Theater yeah it is now it that was 1984 it is still going strong people okay so what's that 38 years and that was so I remember you telling me that that's from something where there were there was nothing really for people of color. There was nothing exactly. for us at that time. Yeah, and and purposely named it Black Movement Dance right. Theater just to, to say, hey, we we need something for the people of color here. And it is now you can major in dance. We were just a mm. club, okay, dancing on concrete floors in the science mm. building. <laughs> I remember okay. you told me you were in the science building. I'm like, that is that's not a very um, it doesn't really give yeah, you the vibe of dance. to dance. No, yeah, no, you need a good wooden floor, which they yes. have now black box theater in multiple, multiple stages in the Davis Performing Arts Center. A whole wow. building was built since we were there, you know, and, and you so, did that. And that's yeah, so that's legacy. <laughs> so, here's, so, so here's why I think these are reasons why I chose those words, because I know some of your story. I mean, I'm constantly learning more about you just from perusing your feed on Instagram, Facebook, looking at, you know, and us working together, me asking you questions about that. How do you think that that, like you being a dancer, you having carried that through your your childhood, up through college and even through now, how do you think that makes you a better coach? That's a great question. I would say, and I'll throw in, I also did West African dance. So Mm -hmm. my dance background has encompassed so many different cultures. I did ballet, I did modern, I did West African you know, then through in Zumba, you know, in all kinds of Caribbean dance. And it's like all of those experience I bring with me when I'm coaching my clients. In fact, all of my life experiences I bring, I say, I bring this machine with me. Like you're not just getting like, you know, this small little piece of me, you, you get everything because I pull from every experience. And so dance, you know, you learn discipline, you learn focus. You you learn to be creative. Um, You create things out of nothing. And that's what being a book coach is. It's like, I take those ideas out of your head that you don't even know sometimes are there because I will push because that's what coaches do. Yes, That's that's what we do. (laughs) That's what we do, you know, to, to bring out that story, because a lot of times there's fear, you know, like, oh my God, I'm putting myself out there. It happens on any stage. So whether it's writing a book, that stage or you putting your body out there, or even in theater, which I also did, (laughs) you know, so whatever format that you're putting yourself out there, even if you're in school and you have to present, or at your job and you have to present, you know, your findings or, you know, whatever you're doing, you have to put yourself out there. And so part of it is the courage to just say, this is who I am. I can do this. I'm good at this, you know, and that energy that you bring to it, it it really ignites other people because they get it too. You know, and once you start going, it's like, and and everything kind of connects for me. It's like all of the different things I do, you're going to get it all. You're going to get, you're going to hear double Dutch. You're going to hear, you know, I'm from Harlem. So that's what we were doing. All right. I'm going to that over 40 double Dutch club. Okay. All right. So talk to me about this because, you know, I know you are, you know, in fact, that's when we first met. You heard my accent. I heard your accent. I said, you were like, are you from Maryland? You're not from Maryland. It was like a question and then a statement right away. And the same thing. So how do you feel that your early childhood experiences in New York, you know, in Harlem, how did that kind of, um, how did that kind of help frame all the things that you've you've done? Let's just go from life first and then to business. Okay. Well, I would say that um, I learned some independence because I don't know, back in the 60s and 70s, kids, we, we had a little bit more freedom to do things like go to the store for your parents and buy 
things that, you know, you can't buy today, right. <laughs> you right. know, yeah. and, <laughs> you and know. you shouldn't have bought back then, but anyway, <laughs> you know, we won't say that talk was, about that. if B Sweets is watching, she knows what I'm talking about, <laughs> you know, but the thing is you, you learned independence, you learned that it's going to be okay. Just follow instructions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if your parent tells you to do something, do that. Okay. We've got parenting coaching here too, <laughs> you know, but the thing is they were like, go here, do this, come back, or you can go this far. list. Yeah. 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 And I'm six, seven, eight years old mm. doing those kinds of things. But I also always wrote and I read everything. Okay. My father, I remember, you know, Reader's Digest, those of you who are of a certain age know about Reader's oh, Digest. I remember that. I read every story in all the Reader's Digest. Okay. <laughs> all of them, as well as cereal boxes or whatever was in front of me. Well, I mean, I'm reading something. All right. So let me ask you this. Okay. So there you are, you're in Harlem. Now we all know what Harlem's like, even in the 60s and 70s, we know what we're mm -hmm. talking about here. If those of you don't know, look it up, um, Google that. <laughs> but I heard through the grapevine that you read the dictionary as a child. Yes. And I will pull out a full, <laughs> yes. I mean, I needed new words. I was running out of words. All the words are in the dictionary. Right? And how old were you at that time? I don't know. Seven, eight, seven. nine. I don't know. I was young, but it was like, it, it was another book to it was read. A thirst. It was a thirst for you to. Yeah. Just First, it was just wow. another book. Like, what is this? And then it was like, oh, like, oh, wow, that means this. And then I, I just started learning new words, you know? And I, so I have a lot of random Jeopardy knowledge, <laughs> spelling bees. I did spelling bees. Of course you did if you read the dictionary. <laughs> right. Yeah. I knew the etymology. <laughs> like all really the All right. The book nerd in me is coming out. <laughs> but you know what? I think what, what I think is unique. I mean, I'm not a book coach. I'm a writing coach though. And I do think that one of the things that's so cool about that is that what, what people do now is very simple. Mm. Like if you used a dictionary word, first of all, you know, there's a generation who doesn't know what a dictionary is. They pick up their phone and they say, spell this word, uh, wow. define this. Really? You know, they're typing along and they press, you, you do that hard press and the definition comes up, I'm, I'm guilty, I use that one. Because I mean, who's looking in a dictionary now? <laughs> well, you probably know the word, so you don't need to use it. <laughs> but I mean, I think that, it's interesting that, you know, as we grow up, that kind of formulates who you become. So if you're, if you're writing from a young age and you're having these different experiences, I mean, our kids today don't even have those experiences. I don't send my son to the store now. He's 16. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just don't, it's just, it's first of all, well, we didn't have sidewalks around my house, but that's another, another story. But I mean, I did that too. We're very close in age and I did those things too. My mom would send me to A and P, you know, get the, the three a cans of uh, green through. beans. Right. <laughs> three for 89. And I better bring back her 11 cent change. She was <laughs> shout out to you, mom. You know, she was like, bring back my 11 cents, mm -hmm. but it does change who we are. I think we have different experiences. So if, if someone was, um, you know, whether our age or not, let's do a shout out to, I actually wrote a question down. I wanted to make sure we do a little shout out to our baby boomers and our Gen Xers. So you and I are Gen X, you know, burgeoning right up against, you know, the baby boomers. And one of the things I think has happened is that there's, we do have a lot more fears though about what people are going to think. And even though we had all this bravery years ago, we're kind of like hit up against it. Talk to people about why, if they even have an inkling that they have a book in them, they shouldn't let fear hold them back. Absolutely. I think um, so many times, particularly when it's new, it, it'll um, present itself as fear mm -hmm. as opposed to it just being unfamiliar because oh you've gotten to this point in life, right. overcoming so many things. This is just another thing, <laughs> okay? Right. You need help. <laughs> you know, You need some structure, you need some guidance to get it done. But if you look at it like any other thing that you need to accomplish in life, you know, many of you, you know, at later ages went back to school, you know, you mm -hmm. went to graduate school, you know, or you even went back to college, you know, and you did it, you know, raising families and doing all kinds of things. So nothing is impossible, <laughs> you know, if you want to do it. And so even with your book, you know, and, and what I know is that, you know, sometimes you just need the guidance to, to find the story. Many of you have multiple stories. Yeah, I so agree. That's with that. usually what it is like in which, you know, knowing what's the story to write now. 
Okay, because the other stories may be necessary, but not for right now. So right. what's the one that has the most energy? Because when I listen, as I was saying, I listen to your life. I listen, there's a vibration, you know, an energy around the story. The real you know, one, the real one. The rhythm, the yeah, that needs yeah. to happen. Yeah. And yeah. so I pick up on that. And that's the one that you need to write. Because often people may come to me wanting to write this book. And so we'll be talking. I said, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. And then I'll hear something like, oh, that's your book. <laughs> right. You know, that, that's- and So when that happens with your clients, what is their, um, what is their response to this? Like, no, 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 it has to be this one. Or do they, do they realize like, oh, bow to the queen? Like, what do they, what do they think? <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, I mean, at first you have to establish that relationship of trust. You know, once people trust you and they hear you out, then they start, oh yeah, like, I, I didn't even think about that, mm -hmm. you know, because you can be so focused on, well, this is what I need, or somebody told me this, you know, but, and it could be that, but that it might be part of something else too. Okay, something bigger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, I, I ask people, why do you want to write a book? Mm -hmm. You know, like what's the purpose for you and why now? Because if you're not ready, because the thing about writing a book, particularly about your life, you know, I do a lot of nonfiction books is that we're going to go places you probably forgot about <laughs> or that you intentionally don't want to deal with. You right. know, and, and when we're writing out those chapters, when we're going through that outline, that those feelings are going to come, but I encourage you. And I say to you all, you have to feel the feelings. You have to feel it because if you don't feel it, you know, then the reader is going to be like, something's missing. I've heard you, know? you say that before. And, and I've heard, I've seen a quote like that. Like if you don't cry while writing it, they mm -hmm. won't cry while reading it. And mm -hmm. I really definitely believe in that. Um, you know, I wrote my first book during the mm -hmm. pandemic, Fat and Happy, and it's not, it's not a sad book at all. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it was there are parts of it for me going through it where, I mean, the biggest one of all was, do I put my body on the cover? You know, mm -hmm. my book coach who, it wasn't you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> it will never happen again. Um, <laughs> But I didn't even understand. I didn't even know you in that capacity at that time. But mm -hmm. the thing about it was that it was like a lot of people gave me a lot of feedback. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't do that. You know, it's going to be like, you know, and, and that I feel sometimes, and you can let me know if you agree that sometimes the fear that you're feeling, is it your fear? Yeah. Yeah. What, who, who's, what fear is it? What is it? Yeah, really? People will project their own fears on you. Um, I know when I first traveled to Europe, I had all these people saying, who are you going with? Where are you going? What, what you doing? Like, what's happening? Like, you can't go by yourself. And it's like, I'm living life by myself every day. Right. Where are you? It's You're not at my door when I wake up, you know? You know, and so part of it is, you know, that something may have happened to them mm. that made them stop, you know? And not that it's not legitimate or anything, but is it yours? It's not you yours. You know, because they have to work their own story out you know, right. in the same way that you have to. And the thing about it is if it won't let you go, like many things that I write stories, I, that it I won't love when you go. say that. Yes. I have to write yeah. that down. I love that. <laughs> and if it keeps coming back, you know, I mean, it can be seasons, you know, it can be years, it can be decades, but it won't let you go. You have to write that book. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have to write that book. And so, you know, particularly, you know, as you get older, it's like, you know, we, we tend to look back and we start assessing what have I accomplished? What have I done? You know, that's where that legacy comes into mind. Like, I want to get mama's story out. I want to get our family story out. I want to get this, you know, I was such a great teacher right. or I did this incredible work, you know, in, in the world. It's like, how, how will anyone know? How will your kids know? How will your grandkids know? You know, like my parents' generation, they didn't talk about a lot of things. Oh, my you know, and that was how they, they grew up, not, you know, being quiet, taught not to quiet. talk about these things. Yeah. Quiet, yeah. Like you don't talk about that. Like you, we, we don't, you know, don't you move on. That. Yeah. But that doesn't mean they didn't need to deal with it. That's right. And, and I so think that's one of the things that, what did you do that's so good with um, so many of your books? And I wanted you to talk about those in a minute. I know you've done so, so many. Um, but the fact that there is a cathartic experience that someone has, mm -hmm. that's not the only reason. I mean, writing right. a book isn't therapy, mm -hmm. but it can be for both the writer and also for the audience. Yeah. And I know you talk a lot about impact. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, it's kind of cool if you get to impact twice, you get to impact when you're in the process, 
of yeah. whatever it is that you did, whether you were a teacher, it mm -hmm. could be something you did in corporate or as a mom or, you know, as a business owner, and then have the impact again. So that first group of people that got to interact with you got to be impacted. And now you get to impact countless people because right. they'll pick your book up and they'll learn from you. And I think for me, like I did not read the dictionary. But starting probably around age nine or 10, like around fourth grade uh -huh. is when I discovered nonfiction yeah. and I discovered reading life stories. Uh -huh. At, when I was a kid, I had big situation with weight and, and being and feeling too big. And I uh -huh. kept looking for the book that was going to tell me someone's life who uh -huh. actually was successful as a big person, like that they were OK. Yeah. And they were few. You know, and I, I now there's so many, so it's really cool. But I mean, as a kid, I understood. No one told me, mm -hmm. but I discovered it in the library that if I could find someone who felt the way I felt, mm -hmm. I could feel differently. Right. And I think so many people are sleeping on their impact and success mm -hmm. because they're afraid of what the people they know are going to think. Yeah. Who cares what the people who know <laughs> are going to think? care about the people who don't know right. you yeah what are they one of the things that you you have to kind of get early is that your book is often not for your family so to speak, or friends you know because they will have those well i know her or you know i knew her when you know but often that story the reason you went through that is for someone else it's for someone else you know it's like i'm a cancer survivor and when i tell my story to different people it's like oh my god really you know, and I tell funny stories. I tell stories about chasing my wig across Pennsylvania Avenue. Okay. The first time I wore one, it was like, <laughs> it happened. <laughs> you got to tell the stories. The truth is funny and crazy and all of that, just like your life. And yeah. so when you put it out there and whether it's a size issue, hair issue, illness, illness you know, yeah. loss of job, I mean, it's life. Yeah. And the more you're honest and, and vulnerable, really, and sharing some of these things, the more impact you have, yes. because people know when you're not telling the truth, people know when you're leaving parts out or you're only make writing to make nice, yourself look good. Polish it up so that, you yeah. know, so you know, overly you know Facebook photos, you know, because <laughs> you know how you feel when it's like, oh my God, that's way too much. But when they just put happy pictures, we it's love fine. them all. You know, but we don't want all the deep, dark, you know, yeah. it's like, but it's also part of life. And okay. as you go through, I mean, one of the things I do, you know, try to do is, is make sure that my books at least offer hope. If it's, you know, some tragedy or trauma that occurred, you know, what is the hope mm -hmm. for someone else? You know, what is, what is the light, you know, literally at the That's end right. of that tunnel That's that right. we can, we can share with other people so that they know that they can get through it too. You know, but that fear, that projection from other people, you know, all of those things, you have to, you know, surrender it all, let it go, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so that the book that's inside of you will come out mm -hmm. because, you know, and I often have my people, you know, we do different um, methods to, to get that book written, you know, but, you know, when you just say it the way you feel it <laughs> and we, it's so much better. And as an editor, I'm going to make it even that much more better. I'm throwing in some words. I'm more better. Stuff, right. It's going to be more better because I touched it. Okay. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's like one of the best experiences, like one of my clients right now doing a ghostwriting project. And she's just like, how do you get the words out of my head onto the paper? Like, that's what I wanted to say. Cause you you're know, a magical so listener. I think, um, I mean, you know, I'm not going to diss any coaches out here, but a lot of people are coaches because they wrote and published one book on Amazon or two or pamphlet. And um, I've seen some pamphlets and some booklets and they don't have a spine. <laughs> and, um, and then they become book coaches and everyone deserves to do what they do. But I think that when you're talking about not a workbook, not even like what I did, but you're talking about pouring your life onto the page. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you don't choose the right person to help you, that light doesn't show up. Because mm -hmm. some people like the drama. I mean, let's I mean, yeah. all of these platforms are very dramatic these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything's dramatic. The news is dramatic. Life is dramatic. But people don't already have their own drama. Yeah. So if your book is just only drama and only darkness, I'm sure you would agree that I could just read, I could just talk to myself about my own life. I don't need to read your darkness and there's no hope. Exactly. So I think for me, that's one of the reasons why a good book coach and just watching what you do has been so poignant for me because I noticed that 
people come with their stuff and they don't know, like they may have, you know, all their papers and like, you know, and they come <laughs> yeah, and they have our, no our idea. image of all the papers. <laughs> yes. It's like, I, here, here it is. And they have no idea what to do with it. And right. so why don't you show us some of the many, many books you've done. Many. So I had to pull and it was like, and we'll, we'll show at least what we started with. Okay. Yes. So this ah. is, oh boy. It is a collection of short stories and observations from the world of boys for mothers. So even in that title, it says who it's for mothers. Yeah. What's it about? Okay. Uh, my son going through adolescence, really, you know, it looks like a children's book, but it was stories that I wrote over maybe a three or four year period of mm -hmm. real stuff that was happening with my son. And that was how I got through it. That's, <laughs> That's right. why it's called, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> There's a reason. Yes. Okay. My second book, Return on Investment. God's plan to get out of you what he put in. And mm. that's why even what I write about my business is called power to excel, because I believe that what you have to do, what you've been put on this earth to do is already inside of you. And we just have to get it out. And what I do is help accelerate getting yeah, those so it's not so out slow. <laughs> yeah. So you, it don't take you 15, 50 years to finish. Yeah, it don't take that long. Okay. And you have had people where they've been trying to write a book for over 10 years. Yes. Most yes. people, <laughs> you know, but the thing about it is, you know, it's some of the best work, you know, when you finally get to, to have them, you know, hold that book in, in their hand. And I'll show this one, this, this wonderful book called not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, this wonderful woman, Joyce Edmonds, we finished her book in March of 2021. She died in May of 2021. Wow. She had went through so many things. She couldn't even speak or walk for a period of her life. But this woman got her book done. When she heard what I did, she said, Valerie, I want to write a book. She knew that and you I, would And I was it. like, wow. are you sure? And she said, I want to write a book. She wrote this book, y'all. Okay. She didn't even have a computer when we started. So all the, the kind of trials and things she went through. So sometimes like this was, and, and the books came to my house. I told her they were supposed to go to her house. They sent it to me. I called her up. I said, Miss Joyce, your books have are, arrived. Oh my God, oh. Is here. she came, she and her husband came to my house and I said, well, you got to sign it. You got to sign it. I'm keeping a copy, right? And not knowing that was her only book signing. Oh my God. But I was so glad that I got her to sign the book, you know? Yes. And she was, her husband was like, you don't know what this did for her. You don't know how excited she's been telling everybody, you know? So just the impact, not just when Ooh. you were talking about that, it doesn't just impact you. It impacts everyone around you. That's the part where your family does get, they're like, you know, my sister wrote a book because he's right. the part that they're be then they get excited. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so just some of the books I quit. Rachel oh, I love that Boy, book. Spiritual Warfare, Miss Verleen, Journey to Self, Stephanie Baker Jones, Be Sweet, Shouting You Out, Girl, Abandoned. Um, Ingrid Pickett, we done did so many books. Okay, stop tripping and pray. But this was our first book. Her yeah, I remember that. Book. Yep. Just beautiful. And you would love that because of the color. She's beautiful color. color right? That's right. And even your book doesn't have to be big. Ingrid referred this person, her pastor. Okay. The gift of presence. How many of you know that presence, your very presence is a gift? So we put this book together for this pastor in Atlanta. And I probably need to do a list of all the states I'm working in because people are everywhere. Are we got California it. represented here. Two chairs, Linda Merritt. Okay. Do you have, um, is his name Coley? Colby? You have, because you've done some children's books. I've done, yes. So Colby was yeah. 10 years old when we started. He wrote this superhero book. It's illustrated about his own life. He created. So it's not about age. Nope. You know, I think my oldest client is 79. Wow. Okay. And he was 10. So, <laughs> so you got the whole, I got the whole thing. And even I have adults that write children's books. Okay. This is called no more knots. So dealing oh, with I real love issues. That. Oh, I got to get that. Yeah. It's dealing with separation and the kid having knots in their stomach. So oh, people are talking that. about real things, you know, shout out to Texas. 
DeAndre out of the ashes. And I hope I got all the books here, y'all. I beat on sell and twitch and twitch with all this stuff. We got water my soul. You have so we many. We got beauty for ashes. We got so a how, new So one. how many, where are we at, right? How many, I know you um, you're. I have totally worked on probably 36, but under my publishing company, I've published 30 books as of right now in two and a half years. So two and a half years, we've got 30 books published. Okay. I think I have seven in the works right now. Wow. You know, and so that's the real deal. That's why I'm saying, that's why I wanted to have you. I know a lot of book coaches and they're doing some really good work. I mean, I know some others that are very, very good and they're really doing the work. I, I wanted to celebrate you because you are a woman and I know you've been through a lot of things. I mean, I, I knew you had had cancer. I know you recently decided to take on entrepreneurship as full time. So we're just about 30 minutes, but I'm going to spend just about, mm -hmm. it will just take another five or 10 minutes because I want you to talk about this journey. So you took this journey you were thinking about this. You weren't part of the mass exodus from working. You've been planning this, that right. you would leave from the juvenile justice system and that you would leave to become a full-time entrepreneur because you understand that the impact that you could make as an entrepreneur, full-time as a book coach, and also as a mentor, because I think that you do a lot more than just book coaching and publishing. Um, so how's the journey been? It's been six months now. What's the journey been like? Yeah, wow. It's been six months. And the thing about it... Um, part of my exit from that nonprofit world was like, it was something in me that again, wouldn't let me go. Like mm -hmm. I kept pushing it off and pushing it off because, you know, as women and just in general, my personality, we like security, you mm -hmm. know, the security of a job and benefits and all of those things. And now I'm having to do that for myself. And it was just like, so that part was part of it. You know, I'm a very practical person. I need things in place. I need to know what's happening, what's going on. <laughs> you know, so for anyone that takes this entrepreneur journey, you know, you have to put some things in place. So I definitely saved money, you know, before I made that leap because it's like, who's who going to pay my bills? You're going to pay my right, bills. Right, 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 so right. the practicality of these kind of decisions, you know, and even I had books under my belt. It wasn't just, I did one book, da -da, I'm doing this. But I had also prior to this did 20 years in drama at my church as the, the right. writer and director. So I had hundreds of plays and things I had written. You're super I had, high creative. You, you know, <laughs> yes. You know. I had written hundreds of resumes. I was doing resumes in like the seventh grade for people. Okay. So I've been writing, making people look good on paper for a long time. So this isn't new this is not, you know, this is true to you. <laughs> this is not new to you. This is true to you. I do. <laughs> Come on now. You know, so, but the writing is, has been that constant thread. The, the high creative is, you know, the dance, I, I, I painted, drawn, done art and things like that. But the writing has always the been thing there. where, because I remember doing a play and seeing an auditorium full of people jump to their feet excited because of words I wrote wow. that actors were speaking or to see people crying from a play. You're like, it's like, I didn't know I was crying. You know, I would have wore something else. I messed up my silk shirt. I was like, I'm so, okay. Isn't well, that amazing? It's, yeah. it's a, it's a big deal. So that's the same people... thing with the book. Like when they get that book in their hands, it's just like, like, I did it. Like, oh my God. Like, you know, and the first time I send them the covers, their draft covers, that's when it starts getting real because they see their name, you know, the color, the, the cover concept we had, and they actually see covers with their, they're like, oh my, like I'm, I'm writing a book. This I is see, right. you know, you've been doing, you've for been the doing it for the last six months. <laughs> right. You, think? you know, so the reality of, of a dream, you know, coming to pass. Yeah. you know, it's, it's so fulfilling. That's really what kind of excites me every single time that I see the end product. Like, I really don't want to accept clients who want me to do a piece of something, but then they take it. It's just like, well, why don't you just let them do the whole thing? <laughs> Cause right. I want to see it to the end. Right. You know, I also I, think too, I think that what you do, you know, and, um, I mean, time doesn't permit us to just even go into some of the people that you've just helped. I mean, it's more when you are working on someone's life story, especially, or their family story. Um, and especially, I know that you specialize in stories that include trauma. Mm -hmm. And many people feel like, well, the story's already been done. Someone already talked about, you know, a rape, or they've already talked about domestic violence, or someone's already talked about whatever it is. 
and they think that means that their story shouldn't be told, mm -hmm. but it's not true. And the reason why we know it's not true because there's a self-help section when you go right. to a bookstore or a library. There's a section on domestic violence. There's a section on marital mm -hmm. discord. And so there's a lot of books and a person doesn't go in and buy all of them. They buy one or two. Right. And so I think that having someone with them that actually doesn't mind sitting beside them, not physically, but sitting beside them through the process makes such a big difference. So let me ask you, I have two more questions for you. When, and you told me a little bit about, you know, what happens when someone's like, yes, they got their book for the first time. So when you work with someone for the very first time, let's say they, 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 they go in and they hire you, how do they, how do you start working with someone? Well, I usually ask a simple question, like, how did you find me? <laughs> like, where did you see me? And, um, one of the, the funniest and best ways someone said was like, I watched all your YouTube videos. It was like, what? <laughs> That's so, great. <laughs> right. I know. It's like, so now they felt like they knew me. They heard all these stories I told or tips or different things. And so, you know, for someone to like, they were like, I, I, I just felt like you were the one. You know, and so just finding out because you want to build rapport, because again, that kind of no like trust factor in a relationship, because this is what this becomes, because in helping you write your life story, which is the majority of the books I do, you have to get close, you have to get underneath yeah. the layers and peel back some things. You know, and so you want to be able to know that it's a fit for both of you. That's like, right. it's That's not true. just a fit for them. It has to be a fit for me too, because I know my style, you know, and I don't want you to be offended, <laughs> you know, because I asked a question, you know, right. like if, 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 the, if, or if you're not ready and I think that's it, you know, because I will say, well, maybe you're not ready to, to get started, but let's, let's check back in a couple of months or How when do people take that over. when you say that to them. Um, it's usually based on the, the, what they're saying, because okay. if, if I'm pushing and there's just no movement, you know, like, normally you can ask a couple of questions and they're like, okay, well, let me just tell you this, you know, but if there's just no movement, then that's, you know, that's how much that resistance. relationship is going to work. Yeah. Too know? much resistance. Yeah. But you and know, that's so, what I appreciate again. I mean, there are, I mean, I wasn't kidding when I said, you know, you're not new to this, you're true to this, you know, it's a joke. But <laughs> the thing is, is that I know personally you, I mean, this is what you do. This is a business, mm -hmm. but you're just not out here to take people's money. No. you will tell someone it's not the right fit. You'll tell someone, you know, you're not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that a good coach knows who they're not for yeah. as a confidence coach, a life coach. There are people I will turn away. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you don't want to be more confident. <laughs> you, you're kind of happy being stuck. And also even knowing the genre or the types of book, like I do a lot of different kinds of books, but there are some books I don't do. And someone had signed up and paid money. And I literally had to send them back like a thousand dollars. It was like, I, I don't do that kind of book, yeah. you know? Well, you and know, it's like, you and it's I both talked about that. I've had that as well for editing. I'm like, Oh yeah. no, I don't read that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I carry you with me. Yes. I, you know, I, I could be driving. I, I, I talked to a client yesterday and I was driving and the, her book title came to mind. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I call my phone, <laughs> record. <laughs> like, right, right. I love the book, you know, because wow. I'm carrying your story with me because right. once you let me in, I, that's sacred space. Yes, it is. You know, I take it, you know, seriously that you've allowed me into your life. Cool. And so, you know, I want to honor that and I want to respect that. And so, you know, I'm praying for you. I'm carrying your story. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, you know, I think I'm finished. And then I go back. It's like, let me fix it again. <laughs> you know, right, right. It's like that constant, you know, wanting it to be as perfect as it can be, you know? So tell me how, so how do people find you? What do they need to do to reach out to you? And afterwards, I'll make sure I put it in the, in the comments as well. Okay. So they can go to my Facebook. I am the book coach accelerator on Facebook. Um, you can go to my website. Um, it's www.bookcoachaccelerator. There's a hyphen in Excel orator. Um, or you can see me on, I'm on Instagram. I'm all book coach accelerator. <laughs> okay. And my YouTube is under my name, Valerie McDowell. So you can find probably, I don't know, 50, 60 <laughs> videos there where wow. you can just listen to some of the things that I've talked about. There's some interviews there. Um, I just was interviewed last week. On yeah, you down popular, on. right? You popular. <laughs> so I'll put that out there. But you know, I just want people to understand that it's time to tell your story. 
You know, it's time to get out of your heart, out of your soul, out of your mind, that thing you've been carrying, those stories. You know, you've got children who are now parents themselves, or, you know, you, you got new generations. And so much of our history, our stories can get lost mm. or it's been hidden or never told. You know, like I have clients where they tell me something like, I didn't even know that. Like, and wow. I'm a big history buff, but I find out stuff like, really? Like the school system was like, and it's, it's just so many things that I'm learning. So in addition to loving this work, I'm also growing as a person. Yes. My own experiences are growing. I want to do things like I'm, I'm partnering with a client on, on a couple other projects because, you know, friendships develop, other Your businesses client. get started because, you know, we're all growing. We're all doing great and mighty things, and but we do them even better together. Yes. You know? and I and think so too we, that when, yeah. when someone finishes a book, that's when they actually open themselves up to seeing what's possible. Mm -hmm. Everyone who writes a book isn't a book coach or isn't supposed to go become a coach from their book, which a lot of people sell that. You yeah. write a book and you become a coach on this subject. That's not for everyone, but there's a lot of connection out there. You don't know necessarily what the next thing is. And I think that's really, you just don't know what's out there until you decide. And I think that if, I mean, by the time you're 50, plus, right? We're both in our fifties. There's some stories to be told. There's exactly. definitely some stories to be told. So that leads me to this question for you. <laughs> so what's your next book? See, why are you going to go there? <laughs> um, there's one with the reserved for somebody yes. book that I have to write because I've been threatened <laughs> that somebody else going to write it. If I don't write it, you know, was, um, that, was it me, Carl? Hello, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually working on a book right now. So I, I, I hope to finish that by August. I, 15th. I see another deadline. <laughs> see? 15th. Okay. When you have accountability partners in your life, they just be like <laughs> jacking you up, man. So in the same way, I'm a coach. I need coaches and other accountability type people in my own life to help me stick to, to yes. the things I need to do as well. But I have several books. i um, just finished a screenplay. Wow. So working on that, but we'll probably, you know, was, have been right. It, it came from a poem. So the, the poet in me, you know, the spoken word artist, yes. in me, I wrote that years ago and it's now finished finally, wow. but it's a book and a play <laughs> or a script. <Wow. laughs> and so even putting that together. So just many projects, like this is what I do. You know, I'm a writer, you know. And the thing is, I want everyone to know if you happen to see this, if you just saw a snippet of this, mm -hmm. this is Valerie McDowell. This yeah. is the book coach accelerator. And you need to understand that when you decide to work with a book coach, when you decide to work with any kind of coach, you want to work with a professional. You want to work with someone who understands the entire gamut of what they're talking about. It's not because they did it once or twice. It's either because they went to school for a period of time and then they actually practiced or because it's something that they actually did a lot. So we're talking 36 books and hundreds of plays. She done did this thing a lot, all right? <laughs> and so um, I would fully endorse anything that she, I mean, she is really good. And the reason why I wanted to have her on the Sunday Corners because I know that whether you're, you know, whether you're a coach, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, or you have a direct sales business like I do with Mary Kay, there's things that you have experienced. In fact, it's interesting to speaking about the Mary Kay thing is that there's these people in this company that are like doing really big things, but they think of it only from this, the sales perspective, mm -hmm. but the stuff you went through is a book. Now, look, you may not want to out your company, but you <laughs> went through something that people can really learn uh, get your experience and they can learn from that. Yeah. So important. So Tell them again your email or tell them again how they can get an appointment with you so that they know how to just, just start this week. It's still July. <laughs> Make week, start now. So you can email me contact at power the number two excel.com contact at power to excel.com. You can hit me up on Facebook at book coach accelerator. You can go there on Instagram. I'm the book coach accelerator and YouTube. I'm Valerie McDowell there. So find me at one of those places. We'll put it down below for you to reach out to me. Or if you want to make me a, make an appointment with me, we'll put a link down there for you to do that as well. All so right. all the ways that you can get in touch with me, I know you want to write your book. Yes, it's going. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Valerie, we're going to do some backstage in just a second. I'm going to stop the live stream. Thanks, everyone. Have an amazing week. You know, I'm going to tell you, be authentic, be brilliant, and be the catalyst. Take care.
girlfriend. Amazing. It was easy breezy. Easy. <laughs> Let me check the live stream, make sure it's over. That's always the thing. It's like, is the live stream really oh, over? Are we still on? <laughs> Let me check. Hold on. Let me. Let me.